Like anybody else on the internet, when I hear the word evolve, I think of Pokemon, wrestling, and AFI. There has been no other punk band that I can think of that has reinvented themselves and evolved as much as AFI. It's really quite impressive what Davey Havoc and the gang were able to do over their decades of making music. But there came a day when their band, when their act, when their sound completely died to me. So we're gonna go through their catalog, we're gonna go through their discography and pinpoint the exact day that AFI died. Hey ladies, Dan Frampton here, welcome back to another video. How's about you like, comment, and subscribe, that's pretty sick. We're gonna get all oiled up and we're gonna slip and slide down this rock and roll rabbit hole with their first project, Answer That and Stay Fashionable. This thing is kind of just like a Reservoir Dogs parody type in concept. There are samples of that movie all over the place. Look at this album cover that's very Reservoir Dogs. You're thinking Quentin Tarantino kind of visuals when you're looking at this thing. And when you're listening to this thing, it's actually kind of surprising if you know what AFI turned into. Because this thing is just a straight up skate punk record, okay? Now these guys are in cahoots with Tim Armstrong and Brett Reed of Rancid. They're on a couple tracks doing a little bit of production and whatnot, but mostly AFI is taking the reins and making this thing sound the way that they want it to sound, okay? But it's not really that distinct. It really just is skate punk, but Davey Havoc's distinct vocals are on this thing, and you start to hear the harmonies that would evolve into the AFI harmonies that everybody knows. So we got Davey Havoc on vocals. Playing the guitar, we got Mark Stopolis. Holding it down on the low end, playing the bass, is Jeff Kresge. And on drums, the other founding member of this band that will last all the way to the end, Adam Carson. So pretty much my verdict on this thing is it's still AFI in a primordial state. They're not quite the AFI that they'd become. They're basically a single cell organism trying to make their way through the water. They're not even on the land yet. It certainly is a very strong skate punk record, but they'd go on to evolve for their first time into more of a melodic hardcore band on this thing called Very Proud of Ya. Now we get Davey Havoc really finding his voice. We're starting to hear those AFI characteristics, like those call and response vocals. And for the first time, we got Nick 13 providing some backing vocals and some guitar work. This would be Jeff's last album playing the bass. My verdict on this thing is that they're very much alive, but there's a lot of growing to do, okay? They sound kind of just like a melodic hardcore band, copy and paste, but with really good vocals on top of it. Not to mention they are really good players, but nothing is really making them super stand out yet. But then in 1997, they hit us again with another full length. These guys are working so hard, writing, recording, evolving, going out on the road, coming back and putting these amazing new kinds of styles to track. It's kind of crazy. This would be the record that iconic AFI player Jade Puget would appear on, but he's not officially in the band yet. This would be Mark Stopolis' last hurrah with the band, and Hunter Bergen would be brought in to play bass temporarily. Little did they know he was gonna be a permanent member going forward. They're not exactly evolving from the last record here, but they are improving on all the stuff that they laid down, and we're starting to hear the AFI characteristics that identify them. We get glimpses into their final form, even though it's clear that they're not quite there yet, and it really is impressive that these guys are just leveling up so steadily out there. They're going to find their authentic voice, but first they're going to have to play around a little bit and put out this little EP called The Fire Inside. This thing is so hard, it is so badass, and it teases the horror punk that they're going to be playing around with in future records. You got a couple originals on side A, and side B, you got a couple covers. You got a cover of The Cure, which gives us like this gothic vibe, and then we got a cover of this Misfits song, okay? And all this sort of stuff are going to be kind of of foreshadowing what's coming next with our boys AFI. Then the Black Sails EP would hit, and this is just basically promotional material for the record that's coming next. But what's interesting to note here is that Jade Puget is now officially a part of the band. There's only one track on this thing that wouldn't go on to the next LP, and that's a track called Who Knows, which is pretty good. All right, so now we're getting a taste of AFI writing original horror punk. Okay, now our appetite is wet. So then they hit us with Black 
sales in the sunset in 1999. This is year after year after year. Every year putting out a new release. Every single year since 1995, they put out new material. And they're not just like hawking it out there. No, they're evolving their sound every time. And Black Sales in the Sunset would be the record that would solidify them as AFI. AFI is officially alive on this thing. This thing is basically just like horror punk sea shanties and I love every bit of it. Now we got Davey Havoc just howling. We got the oohs and the ahs. We got the calls and responses. This sounds vocally, this sounds musically like AFI. They have 100% their identity locked down. You could not mistake AFI for any other band. This is so very much AFI. We get Dexter Holland of Offspring providing some backup vocals on this thing. And there's so many song titles that I cannot pronounce. It's perfectly pretentious. And this would be the first project that they take their foot off the gas a little bit and incorporate some slow passages. It had a sense of groove and direct purpose. This thing came from a completely inspired place. And then the last track, God Called In Sick Today, legendary track, showed that the boys know their way around a ballad or two. So if it's not clear to you, I love this record. This takes me back to 1999, and I gotta say, I love the album cover on this thing too. It just like perfectly represents the songs therein. I'm not gonna be including every EP, but I will be including the All Hallows EP, because if it wasn't clear that they were horror punk on the last project, it's gonna be super clear that they're horror punk on this thing. The artwork, the logo, everything about this looks like a horror punk project. But it's more melodic horror hardcore. It has that track on it, Boy Who Destroyed the World, which I know from Tony Hawk Pro Skater from back in the day. But it also features the most AFI song to ever AFI, and that's Total Immortal. This song is incredible. So the 90s were very good to AFI. They worked their friggin' asses off, and into the new millennium they would continue that horror punk aesthetic when they dropped The Art of Drowning. This follows up that last EP just perfectly. The Days of Phoenix is a huge track off of this thing, and it would be the first time that this band would chart. And even Lars Fredrickson popped his head in for some backing vocals. It's a great record, but it's clear that their like melodic hardcore thing has been fully explored. It's clear that their horror punk aesthetic has been fully explored. It's time for our guys to move on, and move on they they would. Up until now, from 1995 to the year 2000, they were putting out a record every year and evolving and growing every time around. This time, they would take three full years to craft a whole new aesthetic. It's the year 2003 now, and Sing the Sorrow is now on shelves. This is a perfectly timed evolution because it lined up succinctly with that boom of emo post-hardcore. So what did they do? They put out an emo post-hardcore record. And the fact that they had the foresight to put out this kind of record really shows that the band has their finger on the pulse. So yeah, it's a little bit more emo, it's a little bit more tender, it's a little bit more post-hardcore than their other projects, but all those identifying marks that make AFI AFI are still there. Davey Havoc's howling vocals, the screaming, the call and response, everything that you like love AFI for is on this project times a hundred. It's dynamic, it's experimental, it has CM Punk's ROH theme song kicking it off. We're getting strings, we're getting pianos, we're getting badass guitar solos, we're getting melodies, we're getting like hook heaven. All these records so far have been coming out on Nitro Records, which is Dexter Holland's record label. This record, however, would be the last record in that deal. So looking forward to their next deal, what's gonna happen, who knows, but what I do know is that this record is amazing. It's melodic, it's groovy, it's super heavy in parts, and not to mention, it's their most commercially successful record so far. So you know, the major labels came sniffing around and they signed to Interscope after they left Nitro. And that's when they put out December Underground. And everybody knows that song, Miss Murder off this thing, cause it has like 150 million listens on Spotify alone. But on June 6th, 2006, that's right, they released this thing on 666 is when they sold their soul to the devil, to the mainstream overlords, and 
and when they actually killed themselves. This on 666 is when AFI officially dies. So yeah, it might have shot them into the next stratosphere in terms of popularity, but creatively, this thing is vapid. This thing is soulless. They fell off the cliff. They jumped the shark. Huge sellout moment, and it just comes across like some fake screamo bullshit. Like you're trying to force this gothic poetry down my throat. And before your gothic poetry kind of like made you stand out, now it's just so cringy. So my verdict here on AFI December Underground released on June 6, 2006 is the day that they died. I can't even get through the whole record. Then in 2009 they'd put out this project called Crash Love and yeah there's some cool like technical moments on it and it's brilliant in parts but mostly it's just a pop rock record now. Gone are the ways of skate punk. Gone are the ways of melodic hardcore. This is kind of like, we really want to just finally get on the radio type stuff again. We got to like capitalize off being popular. Let's be a popular rock and roll band. But to its credit, it does feel like there's vision and purpose here. It feels less like a soulless cash grab than the last record, but not by much. So my verdict of this thing is AFI are a corpse, but with a little bit of soul. It's like purgatory. And then burials dropped in 2013. And AFI are still on like a crazy legendary all-time run and this record had so much promise the first two songs are so brooding and dark you can still kind of tell that cure influence there but like it finally seems like we're moving into another era of the band that's going to set them apart from all the other bands but we get like three songs in and it's just joy division and cure parodies it starts off all textured and atmospheric it kind of almost seems like doom stoner metal yeah but by the middle of this thing it's just so boring and that song anxious is just literally bad that is a bad track so they may have evolved a little bit on this thing, but they're still dead. Then 2017 would roll around, they put out this self-titled record, also known as The Blood Album, and this is just toothless rock and roll. This thing sucks so hard. Davey and Jade would go on to start a hardcore band called Extremist, which is so much more interesting and so much more better than this stuff. <laughs> yes, that's right, more better. Some people see this as a revival of the band, but not to me, they're still dead. And that brings us to their most recent record. Dropped in 2021, we got Bodies. So, did our boys in AFI revive themselves? Are they alive again? No, this is by far their worst record. This thing sucks so much ass. They are deader than dead, burned, perished, rotted and spoiled. Like horrid, ugly, brutal, no more distinct identity. Like where is AFI? There is no AFI in sight. No more howling, no more oohs, no more ahs. Where are the woes and the na na na's? So dead, absolutely entirely dead. The beginning of of their career was amazing. So creative, so much hustle, and by the time we roll around to like today times, it's the worst stuff imaginable. Now I think it's cool when a band changes their sound and do it successfully. Hell, they did it like four or five times. But by the time they were just doing gothic cure cosplay, I'm totally out. Why are you waiting until like the twilight years of your life to be doing the most derivative stuff you've ever done? It doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. But the AFI songs that are good, goddamn are they ever good. I will always be listening to them until the day that I die. There are some tracks in their catalog that are some of my favorite songs to ever be recorded. And with that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe before you kick on out of here. Until my next upload, watch another upload.